Hey, Bella Buddies. Thanks for watching. All right, you guys, in this video, we're going to talk about my what solds. I'm going to talk to you about my bread and butter bolos. What is a bread and butter bolo? That three, two, one is an item to be on the lookout for. For me, that's anything that I can sell for $35 or less that I pick up cheap. Now, fast sales are always great sales, but not everything sells fast. I think um, sometimes when people are new resellers and they watch these videos, they think that I list these items and they sell immediately. That is not always the case. In fact, that's pretty rare, um, especially with bread and butter. But to me, it is still an item to be on the lookout for because I picked it up for, let's say, 50 cents and I sold it for $15. So that is something I would pick up again. Everybody's definition. Oh, I just got a cha-ching. Oh, oh. Do you notice now that eBay has a cha-ching once when they buy it and then a cha-ching again when they pay? So you think you sold two items, but you really only sold one. What do you guys think about that? Let me know down in the comments. Completely sidetracked forget what I was saying. But anyway, um, I know what I was saying. A bolo is different to everyone. Like some people only focus on a bolo item as being a big money bolo, something with really big margins. And I feel like my store personally, I want a mixture of items. That way I am getting sales every single day. So let me know what your definition of a bolo is. So bolo in this video are items I sold for $35 or less. So let's get started. So the first item I sold is a long tail item. So this would be an example of maybe something that somebody else would not consider a bolo. I picked this up at a garage sale. It was a play set. It's a 1988 Fisher Price press... Precious Places replacement part. But I bought the box. It was incomplete. It had parts and pieces from other play sets of the same brand. And I decided to part it out. I actually did a full video on this over on my Sourcing with Bolo Buddies YouTube channel. It was a part it out video. So you guys can check that out. But I sold this piece right here for a best offer of $12. And the buyer paid shipping. And I'm going to say by the time I parted it out and individualized the listings and what I paid for it, I probably had about 10 cents in this. So 10 cents into $12 to me is a bolo. Did it take a long time to sell? Yes. Do some people uh, dislike parting things out? It takes a lot of time. Yes. It's not for everyone. But these items are harder to find. And I'm looking for that person that needs this part to fulfill their desires of completing their item, either completing it, either they bought it incomplete and they need the item or they broke a piece. That's what parting it out is for. And those items do sell. And did you guys see this new sold banner down here? I think that's new. This little guy came out of a mystery toy box that I purchased from Auctions for You. She has a YouTube channel and she sells to resellers. So you guys can buy boxes of items from her. And I usually get the mystery boxes because it's fun. I can come on here. I can unbox it with you guys, show you how I listed everything. And I've got lots of those videos on this channel. This is a vintage Thundercats 1986 Tusca Warrior minifigure kid works. Telepix. Never heard of it. Used Google Lens. Sold this for $10 and the buyer paid shipping. I will link auctions for you down below in the description and you guys can check her out. She sells on YouTube and whatnot sometimes. This is a vintage Heartland Valley church. Now I got these in a thrift store mystery box and I got to tell you, you know, this wasn't one of the, what are the brands like Lemax and Department 56? Those are the ones that typically go for big money. Now, I got a whole box of these and I was like, Ugh, I don't like listing these things. But here's the good news. They came with the styrofoam. So I didn't have to really stress about packaging. So I'm like, Courtney, just list it. Just do it. I know you don't like this stuff, but just do it. And I did it. And I sold this for $25 plus shipping. My cost of goods was probably a couple bucks. I believe that when I purchased these, the mystery boxes were on sale for 90% off or 80% off, something like that. So I got a really good deal on them. 
So definitely made some money on those. I've sold a lot of the ones that I listed. So they do not have to be Department 56 and Lemax. Those are your big money ones. These other ones, they're a nice bread and butter, 25 bucks on that. Now, these were a nice surprise. I picked a bunch of these up at an estate sale. They are quilt blocks, and I have done pretty well. Uh, some of them I lot up to, uh, like I on a recent video, my Big Money Bolo video, I took, I want to say, eight or nine of them that were the same pattern, and that was enough to make a king-size blanket. And I sold that for over $100 because I did it like that. Now, I had three of these. And I sold these individually. This one right here sold for a best offer of $18 plus the buyer paid shipping. So definitely be on the lookout for those. This is a mini dollhouse vase. I don't know if it's really for a dollhouse, but I put dollhouse in the title because it's the perfect size for a dollhouse. I picked this up at a garage sale, I think with a couple other items. I think it was a garage sale. I didn't put it in my notes, but I recall getting like four or five vases and a little baggie at a garage sale. And I sold this for $11.16 plus shipping. So I may be mixing it up with something else, but probably cost of goods, 50 cents, 25 cents, probably no more than a dollar for sure. This is a Fisher Price Snap Lock Caterpillar Rattle Shake Brilliant Basics. And I did not put where I got it. I know I have picked these up at the Goodwill bins before, and I think I've got them at garage sales, but I ended up selling this for my sale price of $7.44 plus shipping. This is a creative memories circle patterns for cutting. I always pick up anything that is creative memories that is sealed. These items sell, uh, especially like the refill pages. This one took a little longer, but uh, definitely a bolo in my eyes. This one is from, let's see, 2000. A lot of these are vintage or retired. And I got this at the Goodwill Benz, actually, which was surprising. I saw it and I'm like, yes. And I sold this for $12.40 plus shipping. The next item here is how to train your dragon barf and belch zipple back figure. This also came from the Goodwill Benz. And I almost didn't pick it up because it's kind of awkward to ship. He's kind of shaped weird. He's got these wings. And I was like, I think it'll sell. So I went ahead and bought it. So at the Goodwill Bins, it goes by weight. And a lot of you have been saying, when are you putting out another Goodwill Bins video? Um, I should have just released one or I have one coming really soon. So stay tuned for that. Check those out. That's where I actually dig through the Goodwill Bins and show you guys what I find, pop up screenshots of how I listed everything. And it's educational and entertaining at the same time. So sold this for $12.40 in the buyer paid shipping. The next item is this Christmas collection Paragon Needlecraft Holiday Delights Jeweled Ornaments Kit. I, where is it? Did I not write it down? I did not write it down. I took a best offer on this and I took a lower offer. I can't remember if it, it might've been $35. Oh, I can't believe I didn't write it down. Sorry, guys. I missed it. Um, I did take a lower offer. I could have probably held out closer to Christmas and got more. Some of these can go for big money. Uh, I don't think there were many of this style listed. If I remember correctly, I priced it at 75 And I believe I was running a sale and took a best offer, but I can't remember what it was. So I apologize. Probably 35 40 bucks, but not 100% sure. This remote control, most of you would have walked right past it. So I'm going to tell you why I picked it up. I got it at the Goodwill Benz. I have sold this item before and it sold quickly. This one did not have the battery compartment and I still bought it. And do you want to know why? I wanted to see if I could sell it with no back. So I did do the split screen photo where it shows both the front and the back. So the person would see that it does not have a battery cover. And I did show that it lights up right here. So it is working, but it did not have a battery cover. So what somebody's going to have to do is, number one, they have this item and their actual piece stopped working and they needed a replacement and they're going to use their own battery cover. That's what I'm guessing happened here. 
So there are buyers for replacement parts. I got this at the Goodwill bins and I sold it for $9.45 plus shipping. The next item is another quilt block kit embroidery. And I sold this one for $20 and the buyer paid shipping. And this also came from an estate, probably had about a dollar in it. It's funny because you look here, originally this was $5.97 and I sold it for 20. So on retired and vintage, harder to find items, the value increases over time. This is a Calico Critters sink stove. Um, got this at a thrift store for 25 cents and I sold this one piece for $13.20 plus shipping. The next item is this vintage plastic Palomino horse. And I got this at a garage sale for 25 cents. I sold it for $10.54 plus shipping. This is a Nintendo Go Diego Go Animal Rescue. I don't think it's complete. Um, I got this at the Goodwill bins and I sold it for $21.25 and the buyer paid shipping. These Elvis, um, they are, I don't know, memorabilia Elvis. I don't know if my title was that great. I kind of just went with uh, this here and came up with a title. These came out of a dibble box from Donatella Bottolino. Uh, it was a great box. I will say these took a long time to sell. I may have had them priced too high, but I ended up selling them for $21.25 plus shipping. So Donatella Bottolino has a YouTube channel also where she sells to resellers. She used to be on YouTube all the time, but she has switched over to Whatnot. And she is Donatella over there now, just her first name. So definitely check her out over there. She has amazing stuff. Look at this little doll. She is like rolling her eyes. This is a Madam Alexander plush Nancy, fancy Nancy doll. I got her at the Goodwill bins. I took a best offer of $10 plus shipping. The next item are these trolls. And this is Barb Rock and Poppy. And I decided to put them together because there were a lot of them individually. So pairing them up, I felt like I may get a quicker sale than having them individually. Got these at a garage sale for 50 cents, sold them for $16.40 plus shipping. This is a Psych Duck Pokemon, De Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Got this at the Goodwill bin, sold this little figure for $7.80 plus shipping. The next item is a lovey. And if you don't know about loveys, these are awesome to pick up. I pick them all up. Many of them are bread and butter, but some can go for big money. This one is by Cloud Island and it is from Target. And I got this at the Goodwill bins. I sold it for $9.75 plus shipping. This is a Fluttershy Cupcake Keepsake Funko. And this one actually took a long time to sell. I got it at a, uh, I'm sorry, the thrift store for $2.00. And I sold it for $12.99 and the buyer paid shipping. So let's talk a little bit about clothes that have been in my store for a long time. Now, do I consider these a bolo? I'm going to have to say no because it took a long time to sell and I didn't make a ton of money. This is a new with tags blouse. It's super cool. I think it's really pretty. Uh, retails for $59. It's got the original tag on it. It's got the cute little bat wing. Um, style. I thought it was really cute. I'm like, these are going to sell really well. I don't know if it's because it's an extra small, but this item has not been a quick seller for me. I probably had anywhere from a dollar to $3 in it. I bought a whole bunch of them. I still have two available. Somebody offered me seven. I went ahead and took that and the buyer paid shipping. So uh, yeah, close hit and miss, especially if you're doing retail arbitrage. The next item is this Pokemon Pop Sockets uh, cell phone grip. I got this at the Toys R Us going out of business sale. I probably bought anywhere between 50 and 100 of these. They were all Pokemon, all different uh, little guys. Some of them sold quicker than others. This guy's, I don't know if I had more of him, but he's hanging around. I do still have some left. I ended up selling this for $11.86 plus shipping. You can see now it's $8.76. So you're like, what is going on? Why did you sell it for more? Well, I've been playing around with my sale. And we're going to talk about this in another video. I'm going to work on it probably after this. 
And I was experimenting with doing different sale prices and discounts and offers and how it affected my sales. So I kind of want to give you guys the feedback on that, but that's going to be in another video. So when I sold this, I had a lower sale going on. The next item I've had forever, you guys, I had my items on the carpet. I think this was even at my old house. So I bought a fashion bug. I didn't buy the fashion bug. A fashion bug was going out of business and I went in and cleared out the store. I had a bunch of these. A lot of them sold quickly. This pair has been sitting forever, but I sold it for $9.83 plus shipping. And again, you can see I was only running an 18% off sale. A lot of times I do a deeper discount. And again, we'll talk about that in a future video. And the next item is this modern amusement jacket. I got this at a Pack Sun going out of business sale. Again, I probably bought over 50 of them. Uh, cost of goods probably averaged out to about $3 a piece. Retails $89.50. I sold this for $25.99 plus shipping. So when you are buying retail arbitrage, um, especially like when I bought the Pack Sun. I will tell you that I listed tons and tons of items during that time. And I had one of my biggest sales months ever. I think I sold 18,000 in one month because I had all of this brand new multi-quantity items from a going out of business sale and people were buying it like crazy. And that was an in, in addition to just my normal uh, sales that, you know, of everything else listed in my store. But this has been, I mean, before my husband and I got married, so 10 years ago. So I'm still selling items from 10 years ago. Uh, definitely the Pack Sun and the Face, uh, not Facebook, the Fashion Bug Pants. I'm going to say those have been in my store 10 years. And many of you would have been like, why didn't you get rid of that? And well, I just sold the jacket for $25.99. I had about $3 in it. Took me 10 years to sell it. It's sitting over there on a clothing rack. It's not bothering me. It's sold. I made money. That was the last one I have sold, probably 50 of them at least. And it's gone. Same with the fashion bug pants. Had them listed forever. But to me, it's like I've already done the work. I've listed the item. I'm not going to take it down. I'm going to wait for somebody to come along that needs the item. And they will. They will. I mean, I. that's proof right there that old items that are stale sell. And let me go in, let me look at something right here. Sometimes I do go in and relist things, but this one has been listed since 2019 and it's still sold. So I know a lot of times we talk about eBay hiding listings if they've been listed a long time. Um, I, I'm sure that happens a little bit, but I do think if people put in the right keywords, they're gonna find your item. I mean, this I have not relisted since November of 2019. These fashion bug pants. Did I scroll up? Maybe I will find when I listed it. Oh my goodness, look at all these advertisements. October 17th of 2019. And the modern amusement jacket. So these have all been listed since 2019, but that's when I relisted it. They've actually been listed a lot longer. July 15th of 2020. So do items sell that have been listed for a long time? Yeah, they can. Would I have sold those items quicker if I would have relisted and did sell similar? Maybe. Maybe because these are probably very, very low in the algorithm because they've been listed since 2019. But I don't have enough hours in the day to go in and refresh my store by ending and relisting. So I just don't, and I just wait for things to sell. Do I recommend that? It's up to you. You have to do what works for your business. You know what your time is worth. You know where you got to prioritize your time and figure out what is most important to you. Like I'm making this video right now instead of going in and refreshing my eBay store because YouTube is important to me. Um, it's another 
job. I mean, now it's a job. So I'm putting out a video every single day and I need to keep up on that. So I put other things off so that I can bring videos to you guys. And here we are. All right, you guys, enough about that. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. Leave me an emoji of something. And I am on Whatnot now. So if you guys want to come over and join, that would be awesome. There's a link down below where you can get $15 to shop. You can spend that with me or anyone. But what I would like to say most is I would love to see you guys over there just hanging out. Just come hang out. Even if you don't buy anything, it's super fun. It's live. We have a lot of fun. Sometimes it's funner than others. Like one night, oh my gosh, we were goofing off. The chat was crazy. It was so fun. Crazy in a good way. So um, yeah, just come hang out. It's like nice entertainment. So uh, click on that link. Get your $15 to shop. That is my referral link. And I will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.